Yo, we are here on the Other Hand Podcast, and now I'm bringing to the stage one and only Ben and Boston. <laughs> What's up, bro? On the Other Hand Podcast, man, thanks for coming to the show, man. It's a pleasure. We just want to check in with you, man. How you doing? Bro, I'm good. I'm just, uh, I just got done working out. I was on the basketball court seeing if I still had it. You go check the oh Instagram. You go see the footage on there. Do you still have it though? That's still the real question. Juice. I might try for the XFL next year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, getting work out even in quarantine, and it seems like it's not keeping you down. But how has quarantine been for you? It's been a change of life for everybody. But what's kind of have you done anything new since you've been on quarantine? Uh, like when we started quarantine, I was all quarantine. You know, I started the uh, like towards the end. I started getting bored. Like I, I don't know, I was starting to lose myself mentally and physically. So I had to. I don't know. I'm a I'm a, a football player, so you know, like I I need to be active. I need to be outside. I, need to be, I feel better when I'm active. I'm doing something I enjoy. So, you know, I still I still uh, wear the mask and all that, but I'm still gonna get my work in at the end of the day. But when it started, uh, I set a goal for myself to get my college degree. So when we started quarantine in March and uh. I started, I finished my last two classes, so I finished my degree in May. So that's all I did with quarantine. I was going to focus on something. I'm going to come out of this with something. I ain't going to let this shit slow me down from what I'm trying to do. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You can't let it slow you down. And I mean, hey, going back to school in a time where all you can do is really be in your quarters and study, that's the way to go. And what did you end up finishing in? And what are you trying to finish in? Well, uh, my last year at Newberry, so I went to Newberry College. So my last, my senior year, I left school early, so I didn't go back during the during the spring. So I just trained. So I went back this spring and got my degree in sports management. So uh, that's just another uh, check out the bucket list for me. Now you gonna own a team? That's the goal. You played for a couple of NFL teams. Now you go into sports management. You trying to own a team? Nah, I ain't trying. To own, I'm trying to run one, coach one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. Now, I brought you on the show, man, because, you know, like this show is all about the uncommon stories in the sports world. Sure. And you've been there. You've been to the top. You've seen and played with some of the <clears> greatest <throat> players and been on some of the greatest teams with those players. And you see the tragedy of what sports media can be as well. So there's uncommon stories within a lot of what you've done. But we want to start from the beginning. I want to go back to sure. Newberry College. Newberry yeah. College. Now it's not a conventional Texas or how they know the name, <laughs> but you no. found yourself at Newberry. So what was that experience like for you? Well, the only reason I went there because I was I was a uh, I wasn't. It's not I wasn't good enough. I just didn't qualify for Division One athletics. So when I was growing up, no one was telling me you got to do this on the SAT. You got to have a high GPA. Like the kids don't really know that stuff. So. I had to find that out the hard way. So I, I graduated with 2.0 and a low a ACT score. So I couldn't go to nowhere but Division Two. So I got in Division Two, went to Newberry. And I just, you know, I just worked hard and I just finally started believing in myself and thought I could make it in the NFL. Now you're from South Carolina, right? I did. That's what got me to where I am now. Absolutely. Now you're from South Carolina, right? Yeah. Now, growing up in South Carolina, I mean, what is it? Is it something in the water? You guys got guys like John Morant, Zion Williamson, you, and Clemson University is even in South Carolina. Yeah. So what is it in South Carolina and growing up? Because people don't really hear too much about it with high school football, but yeah. what is what was that like growing up? Uh, I don't know why this dude turned the light off in here. He's tripping. He didn't see me standing there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, growing up in South Carolina, man, it's like country, like small, small town country. Like the only way out, pretty much, is sports. So you either gotta play sports, or you, or you gonna be stuck in a small town, like just like you know, just not doing the things you want to do. So I think it's just pretty much that. Like there's nothing else to do but sports. Like we don't have no professional teams. Like we we can't go. There's no NBA. There's none of that. It's just high school sports. So. You just try to be the best. And, you know, when you're growing up, like my mom wasn't really home. My dad wasn't really home. I was always the oldest, so it's all sports. So that's all I really focus on. And I guess now you're I talking about your oldest, so you got other brothers too that you was playing with? Yeah, I have two younger brothers. So I'm 31. My uh, second brother is 28. And I think my third brother is 25, 26. <laughs> but I'm the oldest, so I was always that big brother. So it was just sports, baseball, football, and basketball. So. You're gonna make now, it was that your best sport? Was football your best sport of the three? 
No, nah, my last sport was basketball. See, when I grew up, I played basketball. I just played football. I don't know. My dad made me play it, so. <laughs> Wait a minute. I was a football player. <laughs> <laughs> so you grew up wanting to be like Michael Jordan. You grew up wanting to be yeah, like I don't have players. a favorite player. I don't have a favorite football player, favorite team. Like there is no NBA team. So like what team? I grew up liking Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. So <laughs> football just happened to pan out for me. Like I couldn't be a six four power forward, but I could be a six four receiver. So I'm like, I'm gonna take that route. Wow. Okay. So what about the game where you knew? All right, maybe I got something in this football thing where. You knew you didn't have the grades necessarily, but you started getting the attention that you could play on that level. Uh, I would say my junior year, uh, my junior year at Newberry College. Like when I went there, I wasn't really, I mean, when you're like 18, 19, you don't really know what you want to be. You have an idea. So my junior year of college, I was at Newberry. I remember I had a game, I had 11 catches, 300, 322 yards, and three touchdowns. And that's what? when I really like, <laughs> yeah, I really. I think my quarterback had like a crazy, I don't even know. I think we had two receivers had 100 yards. Like we was just, like I was just in a zone, like I was going crazy. After that game, I really put myself on a map, and things just went up since, like since then. Yeah, I mean, you have three hundred yards as a game, and you're not throwing it. You got something special going on, for sure. Bro, the crazy thing about it, the first play of the game was a was a D ball, like sixty yard pass. I dropped the ball. <laughs> first play of the game. Wait, so, so you could have. Had... More. <laughs> so I could have. I could have had probably three eighty or three sixty or something like that. I dropped the first pass of the game, bro. I'm like, damn. So what are you like? What day. is the feeling? I mean, you're on catch like, like bro, I the first five. Pass the game, like, it's gonna be a long day, but that was a crazy game. And the crazy thing about it, we barely won that game too. Barely winning, you got 300 yards and racked up and my, 11 and seven. Yeah, like I had the most yards in in any division. Like any that should put me on the map. Now putting it, putting you on the map, did that start your process to think, okay? If I'm doing this, then I can easily do this in the NFL. Yeah, for sure. No, no, that wasn't really my thought process. I knew because I knew it was hard. I knew it was like an impossible dream, but that really put me on the map. I'm like, so I got the attention. Now all I had to do was put in the work. So that was my junior year. So I got all the attention. I had a junior pro day, then I run fast. So then my next senior year come around and uh, all the scouts at my practice and all that. So it was just, that was just the start of it. And then after my senior year, I made it into like a uh, all-star game. So I played with like division one players. So I really showcased my talent against them. And then I went to a pro day because my school was so small. I went to Coastal Carolina pro day. And luckily that year they had Josh Norman. So oh, he okay. had, Josh Norman had all the scouts there. So that like that's what really put me on the mat. He had the scouts there and I, and, and I got to participate. So it's been a, like, that's my story. Now you're getting through this process, you're seeing the attention, you're feeling good about draft day. Now what's kind of the process for you and how you felt about how it went? Because you went undrafted, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I went undrafted, you know, everyone, everyone is selling them that dream. Yeah, they're going to pick you up. You were seven round, we're going to call your phones. I'm here and I'm like, all right, man. So seven round, get a call from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, we're going to pick you up. Well, we love you, bye bye. I'm watching TV, they get picked up. I'm like, damn. So I didn't get picked up, didn't get a mini camp tryout, didn't get nothing. It was just cold, like, draft over, phone ain't ringing. I'm looking at Twitter, everybody getting uh, everybody getting picked up. I'm like, damn, like, my dream over. So lucky then I just went back. It's probably like a month, so this is probably May. So I then I just went back to grind and just started working out, started training. And luckily, the Green Bay Packers called me. I had a mini camp tryout at tight end. I never played tight end before. I was a receiver. Wait, what were you playing the whole time, receiver? Yeah, I was a receiver at Newberry, so I'm a receiver my whole life. <laughs> I get a call from the Green Bay Packers. We want you to try that tight end. I'm like, what? Like, I don't know how to block. I don't know how to get in three-point stands. I don't know nothing. So I went there to make many can try out. I'm just learning from scratch. Like, trying to learn a new playbook and trying to learn a new position in three days. Like, you know how that shit go. Like, I'm just like, whoa, like overwhelmed. So I go through that. And then uh, – In the mini camp. In a mini camp, bro. So I go through that, then get paid up, then get cut, then get signed, send me home, go back to working out again, go back to working out again. Then uh, I guess a tight end had got hurt. So then they didn't call and pick me up. So I was there. Green Bay called, back, called me back. So I got picked up and I was there at training camp first day. Then the first day I get to training camp, I'm out there running routes and shit, like at tight end. I'm like, damn, like I'm just – so hype. I'm at Newberry College. I'm in Green Bay Packers. I'm at Lambeau Field. Aaron <laughs> Rodgers throwing me the ball. I run around for Aaron Rodgers, throw the ball. 
the ball hit my hands, I broke two of my fingers, bro. I'm like, whoa, like this is the worst thing possible. Like I made it to the You NFL. broke two of your fingers the first Make, day of camp. Bro, my two fingers, these two fingers. If I can show you these two last two fingers right here. So first day oh out there, God. I get into the NFL, break my finger, bro. I'm like, this cannot be serious. Like so Wait, then I can't. So then like I had to really practice with my two hands, like this the whole like the whole training camp, bro. Like trying to catch passes, trying to do trying everything. To block. <laughs> <laughs> trying to block. Trying to run two positions, trying to run a position, my hands stuck like this. It's crazy shit ever. It's crazy to think about it now. <laughs> and you're trying to make the team doing all of this. With, with my fingers this is stuck. Not like, like, yeah, it's bro. not like your your first round pick when you know nah. you're gonna be on game day. You're like, I, mean, I have to make trial. a team with hand like this. <laughs> yes, sir. But lucky I made that shit though. I don't know. Now, but what's I, your yeah. mindset during this though? Because you're going from undrafted, you thought you was gonna be drafted. You didn't get any calls right after draft day, and now you're just going like, okay, I got to work, but they're in the NFL. Well, I think the thing for me was is I knew I was – so I went to tight end, so I'm like, I got to use my skills. Like, I knew – at tight end, I knew I was fast. I, was, I, I did receiver, so I knew I was fast and quick. So I was just like, I'm just going to be faster and quicker than everybody. I'm going to go get these linebackers and safeties. They can't guard me because I've been practicing receiver. So that was just my mindset. So when I got on the field, I just showcased what I could do more than I couldn't do. So I showcased my athleticism, my speed, my hands. I did all that. And I could play special teams. So that's another big thing. Like, you know, like you're a quarterback. Nigga. It's, it's only 60, 64 quarterbacks in the NFL. Like, if you, yeah. you, like, you got to be able to be versatile pretty much. So I was fast and quick. So I just used that on special teams and slowly just picked up the block. And I just remember every day at training camp, I would always go, just go hit the sled, just hit the sled, just boom, just hit boom, it. hit in my stance. <laughs> so I knew, I mean, I read a lot of books. So I knew it was just, Muscle memory is just getting in the habit, just following the steps, taking the steps, taking the steps, doing it over and over. So I just did that every day at training camp. After practice, everybody go home. I'm just out there on the sled. So I just did that and and just, you know, just try to, uh, I guess, balance out my game, my blocking, because I already had the routes and the stuff from playing receiver from my background. Now, are they telling you, like, all right, we need you to do this, or is this all like, okay, I'm seeing my game develop as I'm going through it? I mean, they're not telling you anything. They're just – like it's every man for themselves. So you either figure the it out, what? You, you know how it is. You either get it or you don't. Like you either learn, you either can block or you can't. I mean, obviously the coaches are coaching you, but you still got to put that extra work in. It's like you being a quarterback. You, I mean, you got to put that extra work in on the film. You got to watch the extra film. Like for a tight end, I just put that extra work in on the field. My blocking. Now talk about the environment in the locker room. Now you're not a drafted guy per se, so you're you're working your way up. But in that process, was the locker room friendly for you as you were getting to that point of trying to make the team? Or was it, like you said, it wasn't even good feelings. It was every man for himself. Uh, it was all good feelings because the people, like, uh, you came in with, like, the drafted guys and the undrafted guys. It's, that's like your draft class. It's like your graduating class. It's people who you, who you go to battle with. That's who you met first. So it was like that. So all the undrafted guys took together. So it was it was good. You know, it was a friendly competition. We had other tight ends. So, um it was just a vibe, bro. It was just so dope. Like, everyone was just wanting everyone to succeed, but still, at the same time, it's in, in a competitive environment. And it is tough because, you know, which I'm sure you've learned going through it, starting as a rookie and then moving through the years, that it's some things you can't control. And yep. what was some of the things that as a veteran, you know, being as a rookie and then moving past to a veteran stage where you're like, what did you pick up about the game that you didn't know or that was – that it surprised you, uh, I would say the the mental side of it. Like growing up, like I, most people, not most people, I think growing up, I relied a lot on my talent. Like talent only take you so far. When you get to that level, you got to be talent and technical, and you got to be in shape. So physically, you, you got to be in shape and mentally. So you got to have both of those things at the high, at an elite level. So I figured that out. Like my body, I always had my body, but my mind wasn't always right. I was out. I wasn't always good on the playbook, but I was a physical, I was good. So I just figured out, like, I knew I had the physical ability. I just needed to put, I just needed to put in that work on, off the field, the playbook, the film, the technique. So that's what I learned. And I just figured out the people who, 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 who know the most play the most, or you play the longest, as, as I can say. The more and, you know, the, you, play, the more opportunities. But with, as get. a rookie though, like what was that, what were guys missing? Cause you know, as a rookie, a lot of guys that may be good still might not make the team, but what were those yeah. guys missing that you really got or figured out to make the team? Because it's still, like, I, I think, feel like the rookie year is the hardest. 
Yeah, it is the hardest. I just think, like I said, I just knew I had that athletic ability. So I just like, I don't know. I just put it in the work, bro. I, don't, I think, like, looking back on it, I don't know what I did or what I didn't do. I just know. I just work, bro. That's all I know. Like, put put some action and just learn that shit. Just figure it out. And that's all I always did. And I still live by that shit. So what was, so that was, would you say that was the most important lesson that you took from the NFL is that, you know, working hard without it, the results showing immediately is yes, the reward that's, that's, that you that's get. That's the to. dark, that darkness, that darkness. When you don't know your phone gonna ring, how hard are you working in? When you ain't, you, ain't, you know what I'm saying? When you're not getting those calls, when your agent ain't talking to you, you ain't talking to your agent in two weeks. Like how much work are you putting in? Then that's the, that's what it, that's what it really counts. It ain't about working out when everything's good. It's about when you're getting cut. How much work are you gonna put in? Absolutely, and you saw the benefits. So you're getting on the team, you do well, now you're making a little bit of money. Did the money yeah. change you once you started to make more than, let's say, the average person that's out here? Uh, I would say the money, I mean, yeah, it definitely changes you. In a good way, though, it changes who you are. I mean, you, you first of all, you reach a dream. Like, you reach some place where you didn't think you would go. You used a childhood dream, so of course it's going to change you. And doing all that work you put in, it's going to change your mindset. So you're not going to think. Like you thinking on a higher level, you've been through so much stuff. I Me, mean, you are your experiences. So I just think that stuff is just the experience. You just gotta experience stuff, put yourself out there, just experience whatever it is you want. Just go through some experience and adversity. And I think that's what really uh, propelled me in life. Still to this day, like I've been through so much. So I know if I get knocked down, I know how to get back up. Like when something bad happened, my mind clicks to pro like, how can I solve this problem? Like, how, like, like, what can I learn from this? Other people are like, oh, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just the mindset you got to have. And being decisive, like you said, man, like when you know when you want to get something done, you put the action behind it. For sure. It's that football mindset that seeing the results of your hard work physically is something that uh, is keeps you going. You know, sure. it definitely keeps you going. But with the money side, too, did you see so many stories of people coming out of nowhere and it being hard to manage because you feel like as a as a football player you want to take care of so many people. But were there challenges for you when you grew into that that status of now making a good income for myself? Uh, there was challenges for sure because you got all this money at your disposal. You're young, you're young, so you got all this energy and this money. So uh, it was definitely a challenge for me. Like I grew up at, I went to Newberry. I'm from a small town, so. Once I got a little bit of bread, I'm like, what's happening? We need to go to Miami. I need I never even I never even did spring break before. I need to go to Panama. I need to experience all the stuff I didn't experience in college because I ain't had no money or nothing. So my first year in the league, I'm wild and I'm going to Miami. I'm doing this. I spent my whole practice squad check in one year. <laughs> my first year in the league, I blew all my bread. I never had no money. I never went to spring break. So like that shit was like like I, I don't know, as long as like I hit the lottery. So Next now, now around, you, no you're spending no money. Like, you're not telling yourself, like, yo, okay, this spend is all bit, my bread. So the next bread. year, training camp, like, I gotta make this team. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't no, it ain't no not making it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how my focus was. I was so focused. Like, I gotta make it. If not, I'm gonna go back to the crib. I ain't got no bread. I done spent all my money. You know what I'm saying? So money. That shit just made me work so hard and just so hard. And it really de de dedicated myself after that. Now you see so many guys, you know, like you said, you get a little bit of money and it, it it's almost hard not to go crazy, but you can't have fun with it and you did. Sure. But then you also see so many guys that are making this amount of money doing things that get them in trouble where people like regular people like me are like, why would you waste all that money to, to steal from the store or do things that are totally, you know, above the pay grade of what you get and like, how do... Like, how do you perceive that energy or what is it that guys fall into in the league when they do the what regular people would think are silly and dumb stuff, but they're making all this money? Like, how do you well, substitute the management? I just, I, just, I, don't know, I just look at it different. Like, man, at the end of the day, you are who you are, bro. No matter how much money you got you don't got, you still got, the, you still got that stuff you grew up with. Like, whatever your habits are you grew up with, you still going to carry that. Like that, that, that's who you are. So you grew up stealing or you grew up doing that. You still going, it's still in you. It might be minimized because you got bread, but if, if you're from the hood, you still going to be from the hood with the bread. So I don't really look at that. You know, you got to look at who the, who the person is. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause you look at all these dudes, especially black dudes, like 
you still from the hood. You can still be in the NFL, be from the hood. You still got those hood characteristics. You still eat ramen noodles. You can be rich and eat ramen, you know what I'm saying? So I look at it like that. Like, you still a product of your environment in the, the day, no matter how much money now, you Do you get. think that there's any, though, there's any, like, program? Because, you know, we've been to college and we've been in the NFL where we get these these talks from these guys coming in and saying, hey, be aware of this. You're going to be on TV. You know you're going to, you know, be on the spotlight. And it doesn't pierce everybody, but do you think yeah. it's do you think it's because of how people view the NFL and it's such a, a status quo that maybe people think they can get away with stuff? Or what is it? Do you think you think it can be a changed culture where you can see more positive relationships? Uh, yeah, I think it's just building those relationships. Like at the end of the day, man, you you out there, you grind, you put that work in for that money. So why would I want to hire somebody else to come and tell me what to do with my money? You know what I'm saying? So, like, people look at it like that. Like, it's my money. You can't tell me what to do with it. But at the end of the day, I, I thought the same thing. But as I got older, you got to kind of be more smart about it. Like, I'm going to put something. I'm going to put my money in the hands of, of a professional, someone who's went to school, who has a good background, who's experienced. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So. When you're young, you think like that. You think you can do what you want. But as you get older and more mature, you are starting to understand, like, there's people out there that know more about you. They went to school for money and finances, all that stuff. So that's how I really I started looking at life now. Now, is it hard? You know, it's like athletes, man. Professional athletes, you get them pulled from all angles by so many different people. How, how do you get into that culture for finding out the right people that's around you because you know you got financial people coming around yeah. you new friends new places new things and you guys are kind of guarded as pro yeah. athletes are some of the hardest people to work with for sure why is that and and how is that culture is it toxic or is it seen as a a hard thing to discern between good and bad people i think it's just hard to discern between good and bad because like i said you put all that work in to get to that level and you got, and then you get to the NFL, and then you get this check, and you're like, this is mine. Like, I work for this. Like, I put all this work in. I'm not going to put my money in the hands of someone who hasn't. You, I mean, I don't know. You just know what you did. It's different when you work for your money. So I think that's part of it. It's hard to trust people. So I just think you have to build build a network and build a, uh, relationships with people, figure out who they are, figure out who you can trust and who you can't trust. I mean, I think we do that in life anyways. I mean, I don't think you have friends that you can't trust, if that makes sense. So. Yeah, social media, it too, has been really been implemented in the professional sports and has made it even bigger than what it was before it got started. So what was your perception of social media growing up in it when you were in Newberry and starting out in the league? And how did you view social media then? Uh, when I grew up, I was I was big on social media. I grew up on MySpace, so it was MySpace in the top eight, so. I was big on that. Then I got to college, it was Twitter and Instagram. So I'm like, I was big on that. So like I said, the more exposure I got, the more exposure I got on uh, social media. So I'll never forget when I first, my first year on practice squad, I'll never forget. Uh, I finally, first week, of, first week of the season, I made practice squad, I finally get there. I'm like, uh, I go to the player development guy. I'm like, bro, how do I get verified? Like, I want my <laughs> social media to verify, my blue check. Like I made it, I'm here, I'm here. I want my blue check on my Twitter, on my Instagram, on my Facebook page, verified. I need what all up? straight up. I work I work too hard not to be verified. So like I grew up on I grew up to me, so I already knew what the heck about. So I got my as soon as I made it, I got my shit verified. That's all I cared about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So <laughs> so you, you got verified. To, you got that blue check. Oh man, you got you, your you, first you, blue check. You definitely feel like I got the blue one. You ain't got the blue one. I can't, we no, can't see the same eye to eye. Everybody can't get this. <laughs> you know how you already know how it goes. So you get the blue check. Now you you ride high. You in I'm, professional I'm, sports I'm, and everything is going. I got the Instagram but, picture. I got my jersey on there. <laughs> but what but Instagram and social media changes though. You know, did like did you find out when you started playing professional sports that yeah, I'm getting a lot of fans, but there's some people that be hating too. I mean, I definitely did. Like, like when I first got to Green Bay, like I said, I, I got verified. So you start getting all these, you start getting you get verified, you start getting more fans, you start getting more attention, people start paying. So it's definitely good and bad to both sides. But I would say most of my social media has been good. I, I mean, uh positive at least. I don't really put too much bad stuff out. I don't, I'm not really too, uh, 
like a negative person. So I try to be positive. I mean, I might lash out every now and then a couple of fans, <laughs> but for the first, for, for the most part, I'm pretty positive on social media. Now, while you were playing, did you read the media? Like, do you think NFL guys and just professional athletes should read into oh, tweets and into all stuff that. as you grow? Read all that. Read all that. <laughs> I did. I read everything, like, because I use it as motivation, like, or like criticism. Like, if someone like, damn, Brandon, like, you can't catch. Like, I need to, might need to work on my hands. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're too slow. Like, oh, damn, you might need to work on my speed. Like, oh, Brandon, you looking a little chubby. Like, you looking kind of. Chubby in that jersey, like, oh, right, I might need this. So it's always criticism. It was always, uh, I guess, positive criticism for me. Just something for well, me to bullets but and does it, Is it hard, though? I mean, like, think about it. You can't, you can't satisfy everybody that be tweeting you. You can't, but if you're strong enough mentally and you read that, I mean, you look at stuff for a reason. You know what they're going to say. You got to take the good with the bad, you know what I'm saying? So if if you want to go in that alley, you want to open your Twitter after a bad game, that's on you. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta be ready to have whatever. You throw three picks, you gotta be able to go on Instagram <laughs> humble, <laughs> or they gonna humble you yourself. They gonna humble for you. I mean, you can't yeah, throw three. Hey, you can't, hey, Lee, you can't throw three picks at the swamp and think you're gonna get on uh, Twitter <laughs> and it be all gravy. <laughs> yeah. Yo, you you Man. you wonder like people get really tough over social media and they they say what's on their mind, but. How do you think that's, that's human? That's sports, human. That's, that's called being a human, bro. You say what's on your mind, and you everyone has an opinion, so you got to take the good opinion and you got to take the bad opinion. Now, there's but a lot of guys that change, that. huh? A lot of guys have changed from that, though. What do you think? A lot of guys change the whole game from social media because they can't stop reading into it. But I, I personally think that is. BS, you shouldn't read it. Dude. You shouldn't even have it if you're playing sports just from a, a mental health standpoint. How can you say that when you had it when you played? I Look, I, when I played, hey, I liked it. You're the quarterback. But I didn't like it at the same time. I rather I felt like I had to have it because I had the blue check. I mean, you can't just get rid of it when you get the blue check. But I ain't like reading it either. <laughs> but only if you play a bad game, don't get on there. Shut it down to the next game. <laughs> it need to start now, I think Instagram and Twitter need to get like a positive feedback and a negative feedback yeah <laughs> we need to separate the like, columns yeah the like, two, you the negative you shit. Read. here you go you wanna hear the good shit here you go <laughs> hey hopefully Mark Zuckerberg's hearing this he can get some, sure. uh, some editing on there for sure just, <laughs> just throw me a meal and we'll call it either <laughs> now, you, now you think about branding and in social media, you see it in the college sports. Now guys get an opportunity to take advantage of brands. The business side of football, how would you think of it while you in it from a social media standpoint? And how are you transitioning into using it now for business? Well, I just, you know, just playing the game. Like when I first got in the NFL, you know, they, they just teach you that stuff. Like your Twitter, that you do what not to say, what not to do. You don't want to, you don't want to get caught at the strip club and someone posts a picture of you. So you learn how to operate. I mean, you know how to move around that stuff. So uh, then they teach, even teach you how to monetize. I remember growing up, I mean, not growing up, but being in Green Bay, like uh, all these different people reach out to you. Like, do you want a shirt made? Uh, do you want to do a radio show? So I was in Green Bay, I had shirts. I had my uh, weekly radio show. You get all these opportunities because you're an athlete. Like everyone wants to hear your story. Everyone's going to hear from you. So this stuff, so, like social media definitely is good. Uh, if you use it in the right way. Absolutely. Now, being a vet too, you hear so much about vets talking, oh, you got to learn how to play the game, not on the field, but the game of NFL, the business side, the athlete yeah. in the business side. So explain what kind of learning how to play the, the game on the game and what that is. I would say just learning how to move, like learning how to, learning how to train, learning what to put in your body. You know, just learning what to look at on film, like learning how to break down film, learning how to uh, read a coverage, just all those little things that you ne might necessarily not – didn't get taught at school. So I went to Newberry, so we didn't have the best film people. We didn't have the best coaches. We didn't have the best scout reports. Like, we didn't have the best recovery stuff. We didn't have, a, a what, like a, a cold tub. Like, we didn't have normal tech boots. So I think being a – going from a rookie to vet, you just learn how to operate. You just learn – how to conduct yourself uh, as a professional. 
Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's not easy though. I mean, you got so many people that's involved in, in the in the world of sports, and you're just trying to find your own lane through it all. But what are those relationships that you build like in the NFL? Do you still have them, or are they just more of a business? You just go to work and see these guys every day. Well, I think it's a little bit of both. So um, when you first get there, I guess you got to kind of earn your stripes. So, I mean, like earn your respect. So as you do that, you start to make more friends. People start to talk to you more. So first you got to earn your stripes anywhere you go. So you got to do that. And then it becomes a friendship. It becomes teammates. So you teammates, you with that person for probably 20 weeks or more out the year. So during the season. So you just slowly start to uh, talk to people, get comfortable with them. And, um they become your friend. They're either going to be your friend during the season or uh, like lifelong friends or teammates. Yeah, I mean, you know, those are the guys you with more than your own family. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what is that um, that bond like? You know, you talk about an NFL bond is a special group of guys that once you're part of that NFL shield, you're forever. But being in that group, did you see any difference between that group and the group that you was in even at Newberry? Oh yeah, you definitely. I mean, you just, just like you said, how you move, you just move different. How you think, you just think different. Uh, your work ethic is different. You know, your mindset. So, you just, I don't know. You just go through life and you learn and you, you pick up stuff and you apply it. So, that's all I ever did. So, what would you say is the best and the worst part about the NFL? You know, you got the money, you got the status, you got the verified checks. But what else about the NFL was good, and then things that you were like, okay, it all packed up when you said. I'll say just finally, you know, reaching somewhere that you thought of as like a childhood dream, you know, just something you always wanted to do, and you finally get there. You got all the money, you got the fame, you got whatever you want at the end of the day. But uh, yeah, I think you get all those things, but the job security, you don't have no job security. You don't know when your last day. You don't know when. It, it could be your last play. So I think that that is part of the part of the most worst part about it is job security. There's no job security. Yet. Like they're trying to have people every week. So I would definitely say that's the worst part about being a professional sports as a business. If you ain't getting it done, they'll find somebody who will. And you got the players, you know, the players are very, very tight, you know, within the locker room, but the NFL players union, which associates and talks as the middleman between the players and the, and the owners, it's a disconnect. How yeah. is there so much of a disconnect in the players' union that, you know, you get the players fighting every other four or five years on the agreement, and it seems like there's no progress. But why is that? You know, it's funny. Like, when I was playing, I never really even looked at like, – I, I didn't know what any of that stuff even mean. Like, still to this day, I still be confused. And, like, I don't know what they're even arguing over. Like, I thought you was working for us. Are you working for the NFL or are you working for the players? So – I think that's the part of the disconnect. Like, like I don't know, the, the people who have the power aren't communicating with the people who are playing, if that makes sense. Now, what responsibility, though, on the players is it to be able to come together on United Front to make these demands and and, and really set a, a path forward? I feel like the players obviously have the power in the, the – the coaches because y'all playing on the field but where is the unity lacking is where he's like all right guys we need to be serious because this affects after football as well as during football yeah but i think the people who make the decisions and the owners they they i mean that like the players only matter so much and they if you're not if you're not playing you're not getting paid they're billionaires they don't i mean that that's just you know it's just i don't know i, I just look at it from a money stamp standpoint like the millionaires and the billionaires they're gonna make the decisions at the end of the day and they have the most control they write the so checks do you, do, you, do you ever see though a player they're writing, only they're writing uh the commissioner checks the owners writing the commissioner checks so who do you think they gonna listen to the players like you think roger could listen listen to the owners or you listen to the player who cut they're check? not gonna fire all the players at one time either you think they're going to fire Tom Brady and Gronk and all the Tom guys? Tom Brady ain't going to quit, though. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> Tom Brady out there. So, if Tom Brady's like, look, 
until we get these NFL PA things figured out, I ain't playing. Would you next. think that that would change the league? Next quarterback. Who up next? Who <laughs> <play that? laughs> they ain't playing with him, man. <laughs> it's Tom Brady. Who's the backup quarterback in Tampa Bay? <laughs> Gabber, I think. <laughs> Man. Okay, so why is it different for LeBron though? LeBron could do that. LeBron could sit there and be like, you know, we ain't getting it right. I'm not playing. It would make way. Because first of all, they got a better commissioner. You said the commissioner get paid by the owners. What's the difference? I don't know how they, I don't know how the NBA works. Is, <laughs> is, is the owners paying? Uh, what's his name? Adam Silver. Uh, I'm sure they are if they hired the dude to be a commissioner. So what do you think the difference is between NBA and NFL? I think that the, the NBA is just I think the NBA is just committed. The players like LeBron, they're seen, they're marketable, they're committed to 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 having what they want because the players do control the league ultimately. Because if all y'all said at one time we ain't showing up, but they like ain't doing guys that. like Odell. Well, who, who's gonna do that? Well, you well, got it now. I mean, you got COVID going on, and guys are have to have and guys. And people are, still ain't Tom Brady ain't <laughs> dropping out. <laughs> what do you mean? What what NFL player you know that is good? Say he ain't playing this year. Is Odell said player? he's thinking about it. How about that? Okay, and then oh, oh yeah, I saw that today. Like I'm like, come on, Odell, man. <laughs> you can't say so. He, you don't think it's serious or what? I think it's serious, but just a statement that he said. I'm like, come on, bro. Are you either okay. gonna play or you're not. You either gonna get paid or you're not. You make that decision. They ain't making you play. So you think it's more player decision? Like, look, if is that that's what they said. Deal? Like, if you want to opt out, that's cool. If you want to play, let's play. <laughs> what okay. side are you on? You either gonna play or you're not. Don't complain and still play. Like, what the fuck were you doing? <laughs> <laughs> they giving you a choice. They giving you a chance to make a decision for yourself, and you still. I'm playing about it. I don't know. All right. Well, there you go. So if you don't want to be a part of COVID, don't play. If you want to play, make your money, make your money. Yep. But there's, do you still think, though, that there should be some unity within the NFL PA where y'all can be united in the sense that y'all can get better benefits? Because there's a lot of people that aren't happy with the current agreement that was made because it affects a lot of people. Yeah, well, I just to be honest with you. I just started looking into that stuff since I've been retired. So I'm I've been looking into the benefits, learning more about it. So I'm not as uh, educated on it as I should be, but I definitely think the benefits should be better. Uh, I don't think lifetime healthcare is realistic, so I'm not gonna say that. But <laughs> when you're done playing, you only get five years of playing, and your five years insurance when you're playing. So my insurance is up probably in the next two years. So I got to start looking for insurance. So. I definitely think you should get longer insurance or insurance when you need it the most. Like I'm 31, I don't really need my insurance as much as I am when I'm going to be 50. That makes sense. I'm gonna need more healthcare when I'm 50. So I think there should be a, a you know, like a more balanced uh, system there for sure. That's absolutely true. I mean, I mean, this has to be something. I mean, how do you see the future of football? Is it as so much has become? Such a young man sport with all these young quarterbacks, you know, with the Lamars and Pat Mahomes, ridiculous contracts coming out. How do you see the future of football shaping up? Honestly, it's gonna be like it's gonna be more of a uh, like it's not gonna be about size. I don't think. Like I remember going up, it was how big as a linebacker. They're, like they're not looking for that three, that six three, two hundred sixty pound linebacker. Like they're looking for someone who can run. I mean, versatile can do a lot of bunch of things. So I think it's starting to become more of a uh like a game in space, like more of a quick, fast speed game. Like that kind of stuff. Like you look at the Chiefs, like they got the fast receivers. All, like they don't have the six four, six five receivers. I got I think it's just coming more of a speed game instead of a uh I guess physical and I guess size game. So would you attribute a lot of that to how you came into the league? I mean you were it sound like you were the first kind of Give me, give me Graham style. You were more of an athletic receiver, tight end, yeah. than than a brute blocker. Yeah, I'll definitely. I remember coming out like I, I always try to play after Vernon Davis. Like Vernon Davis was a crazy oh, tight end. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what I'm always. saying. You put up the crazy numbers. So I think when I first started, like the game started coming to 
like the big and the fast guys. Like you gotta be if you big, you gotta be fast. Like they're not looking for the big tight end that can block every play. Like they need a guy that could like do both, you know. Absolutely. So you played for a couple teams in the league. Now, was there a big shift for you when you were like, all right, I'm with the Packers, now I'm with the Jets? Was there like a, a huge transition process or did your mind shift or change at all? Because now you're seeing the business of the game. You're seeing, all right, yeah. they just trade me like it was nothing. So uh, now I got to get like a prayer or what was that going from team to team? Uh, well, I would say you got to read, like I said, you, you got to earn your stripes again. So I got cut from the Packers. Now I got to go to the Vikings. Like, I got to start all over again. They don't know me. All they know is what I did. So it's kind of like you got to earn your stripes again. You got to start all over, make a name for yourself. And, uh, you know, East culture is different on the teams. Like, I remember the Packers. Like, it was a different culture. Like, it was winning. Like, if you didn't make the playoffs and or go to the NFC Championship game, it wasn't yeah, winning season. Like, to the Jets, it's like, uh, like, we like we hope we might beat Tom Brady. Like we gotta beat Tom Brady first. Like, this is a different attitude when you're on a winning team and a losing team, or like if you're on a good organization and a bad organization. So I've been on uh, both spectrums. I, I guess both sides now, of the spectrum. Teams. And not growing up having a favorite team per se. Like, did you have a favorite once you been at those three places where you like? Okay, I really like this place. I want to go back or. Uh, I, I don't think when you play, I don't think you really like a place. It's more about playing. It's about, it's about getting them checks. I don't like. I don't think I ever said I don't like being here. It's like I'm here for a reason. So I look at it like that. But now that I'm doing done playing, you know, I look at. I still watch the Packers. I watch uh, the Jets for sure. So I stuff. I still definitely look at those teams, and I like to watch football. So I watch. I don't care who's playing. Do you have your favorite memories? Three teams. Or like man, you know. Yeah, I, like, mean, I, I, I can't even remember half the shit. That, yeah. I mean, I remember not thinking about it, but like it was such a like you just so locked in and focused on the next play. Like I'm trying to buy myself another week on the team, so I don't really have time to like be enjoying this shit. Like they just had tryouts yesterday, so I gotta be on my shit this week. So I what really is that pressure time. like though? I mean, every week like they I got said, another got guy no, trying out. You ain't got no job security. It's like I don't know. That shit was crazy. I'm glad I don't deal with it no more though. <laughs> but did it make it worth it though? Like, did when you look back, okay, I did, or was it like, man, that's some pressure? I mean, like when I was there, I, you enjoyed it. I mean, like, I don't know, it's just humble. I mean, it just keeps you, it just keeps you working, it just keeps you on your toes. You're not ever relaxing. If you are, shit, next week you might not be there. So it just keep you motivated, just keep you on that grind, just keep you locked in. Now, what was it like for you? you know, okay, you you head in the league. Now you're transitioning out of football into a new life. What was that like for you, and how is that transition even today? I would say it was tough. Like my last year playing football was 2016. That's the last game I played. So it's 2020 now. So anytime you, I mean, I think it's just, I think it's about your like your identity. Like you grew up playing football. Then I was saying you're not a football player no more. It's like, damn, who, like, who am I? Like, I thought I was a football player, and now I'm not. So now I gotta figure out something else to do. I gotta find, figure out who I really am. So, you know, you just gotta do some sort of soul searching. Figure out what you like. Figure out what you like to do, uh, and just start trying a bunch of stuff out, and just, I'll you know, just go from there. But it's gonna be a, a tough of transition. It's not. It's not an easy transition. I'm still transitioning. I'm trying to see what I want to do next. I'm trying to figure out how to do it. So it's like you got to pretty much start all over again. You got to start from scratch. Now, what makes it like that? Like, I talk to people about it the same way, and I'm like, you know, you really don't know what you like when you yeah, get you know done football. with football because you, 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 that's all you ever did, but that's that's not good either. You know, it's not. It's like, not, but I think you, got, in a certain sense, like, you kind of be that guy. Like, you kind of be got to be that way. If you want to make it to that level and play multiple years, you got to be – like, I don't know. For me, that's what worked for me. It might not work for everyone else. So I was just, there's no plan at B. It's plan A. I'm, fo I'm so focused on plan A, I'm locking on plan A that I know it's going to work. So that's how I always thought and it worked. So now, uh, like, I made some money. Now I could, my, my career's over. It's an easier transition instead of having to, I mean, we all transition. You get out of college, you transition to something else. So I guess my transition was delayed. Uh, I guess I, I got the transition five years later than I guess my 
people I went to school with. Like I started, I had a head start. If I would say, yeah, I mean having having some money starting out. For sure, transition that's what I'm saying. Is so I played five years. Better. So my transition was easier than a person coming out of college. If that makes sense, but it was still harder in the day. Now, what's that process like trying to find what you like? You know, you've been blocking, catching, and running all the time, but now it's like, okay, I got my own time. That's what I said was the biggest surprise is not having a day-to-day schedule where people are telling you where to go necessarily. But, but the, the flip side to that, like, I need that. I need someone. I need a structure. I need the schedule. I need to know I, I this at seven. Like, I, not having that, that's too much time for me, my mind. So I, I, I like having a schedule. I like doing this, that, that. So I loved it that way. So. See you the other way, like you you like having your time. For me, I'm a structured person. I need that structure. I need you know I'm definitely saying? a structured person too, but when I got out of football, like I said, like building that your own structure, it became yeah. a whole different game. Yeah, but not everyone know? can build their own structure though. I, that's the that's the that's the question. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Not everyone can build their own structure. Shit. Now, how do you go about building it? I mean, shoot, what I did, I got out of school, got a couple phone calls going. I get an overtime and now I'm off and running. But like you said, everybody does it a different way. But how has your transition kind of started and shaped up as you've seen? Uh, like you said, I just, you know, I knew I liked sports. So I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to stay in sports. So I stayed in sports. I just try to do something I didn't like. Like I was, I mean, not something I didn't like, something I know I need to work on. So my thing was when I came out, I'm like, I'm not really a social person. So I got a job at LA Fitness. Selling gym memberships, <laughs> so I was selling gym memberships just so I could work on my, you know, my people skills. Like I was never like a people skills, learn how to talk to people, learn how to sell people. So I worked at LA Fitness for like six months, at like two thousand what years that two thousand eighteen. So I worked there. Then uh, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do something else. So I quit that. Then I got a job at Nike. So I'm working at Nike just so I could be around people, learn people, learn learn the real world. You know, because I've been in the NFL, I've been at the highest level. Like that shit ain't like this is the real world. Like. So I work at Nike just to humble myself, get you know, just just come back down to earth for a minute. So I worked at Nike. I was getting the three hundred dollar checks, four hundred dollar checks. Yeah, what myself. is that like? like that was you all, that was all. I only did that to work there just so I could, you know, just come back down to the real world, just to yeah. really see what the real world, like how people live and like how people survive and working at Nike. How you you making a minimum, making twelve dollars an hour? Like I needed, I needed that because I know that like that's the real world. I know it had to be hard. You know, you work hard. You felt like you were doing everything right. And then at the end of the week, they give you a wimpy old $300 check. you like, it's missing some zeros. Exactly. Was that so the, hard the, for you? But it wasn't hard for me because I knew what like, my purpose was in a sense. You know, it was bigger than that. It was more for me to be able to talk to people, talk to all these different people from different backgrounds. You know, just I know I needed that because I'm not really a social person. I'm not open up to people. I'm not asking people how they're doing today. So, like, I needed that. Uh those aspects. It was never about the paycheck. It was more about what can I learn from working at an LA Fitness and or or working at a Nike. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man, or or, or being crazy, just taking man. or just taking orders from a people who, not to sound cocky, but isn't as isn't as successful from you. If that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like I got a yeah, Nike. You haven't been the same places you've been. Exactly. So I like I, I, I don't know. I just always look at it as, like from that uh, perspective. Yeah, seeing the same side, man. Seeing both sides is sure. just something that's. It's an interesting dynamic, man. Even when I think about it, I mean, I'll go from, I would have never thought you go from playing in front of thousands of people and you get eating the best food, going to best places, sleeping the best bed, you know, you all on TV and then you I, transition, not even. Exactly. You see me working at Nike selling shoes <laughs> at the mall. <laughs> see, I, the, the, but like, from I a at, you this, would have never thought though. You would have never thought. After you caught a touchdown, you do dance, whatever, and you run off the field that in a two years, I'm going to be selling shoes at Nike. Yeah, but it was, like I said, it was deeper than that. It wasn't about the selling shoes. It was about what can I learn from that? Like, I needed to be – I need to be a more diverse people. I need to talk. I need to be more open. I need to learn how to sell shit. So I just know – I just try to work on my weaknesses, and that's what I was doing. So now I'm done with that. I started doing that. So I'm going to get back into football. I'm going to be a coach. So I've been doing the sports training. Just doing, you know, you know, just staying involved with the game. Staying involved with the game, you gotta stay close. You know, you, you, can't, you can't go sure. too far. For sure. Now, what's the best thing that you've seen from coaching that's a little different than when you were playing? Like, is it a mind? Are you yelling at kids? The mindset you- and the work ethic, bro, it's different. <laughs> these kids these days, they got it easy. 
and I used to work <laughs> stuff, and it used to seem like the quick the, the quick results. Like I work out one day and think I'm supposed to be fast tomorrow. <laughs> nah, <laughs> it don't work like that. You got to do it over and over. Like you know, it's just it's I don't know, just muscle memory. You know that you got to perfect it. You got to put the ten thousand hours in. And it's interesting now, like you said, these kids that just fan ain't, ain't there for the grind as much. They, they're there for the ground. They, they ain't trying to grind. They're trying to put it on the ground. Put my little cute video, like, come on. I don't know. It's different. But now, so I, now I know that I got to move different. You know what I'm saying? I got to use that to my advantage in a sense. You got to push them so, a little harder. You got to make it more fun for them. You got to make, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You got to do the little stuff like that to keep them engaged. Because these kids ain't trying to go outside on hills in 100 degree weather. <laughs> And not trying to do that, so you got to switch it up. You, but you still got to get that same results, though. It is interesting how the game has changed so much, man. You used to we used to clown people that would love to get on the gram and show you a little ladder drill, or exactly, you oh, catch yeah. exactly. Now it's like a thing to do. <laughs> so, so you seeing so many different evolutions to your life, right? You seeing going from South Carolina, not not having that first. Hitting the roadblock, then you went to Newberry, hitting the roadblock, then you went to NFL. So, what have you really learned through these processes so far? And what are you trying to prove now? I mean, you feel like you've been through all types of peaks and valleys, but what are you trying to prove now? Uh, to me personally, I'm trying to, you know, I'm just trying to, I want to change the world. Like, I just want to change, I just want to make it better for the, for the people who, uh, like the younger kids, people who, who didn't have it? Like I grew up, uh, three brothers, like uh, mom and dad, and a trailer. So I grew up like that. So I grew up rough. So I want to see the kids make it. So I've been really big on this this whole kid movement. You know, just just passing the knowledge, just passing everything I did, just passing those experiences and those lessons that I learned, just giving it back to these kids. That's all I really want to do right now. I'm just trying to pass that message and that knowledge to whoever is listening, no matter if it's sports or whatever. Like you can do whatever you want. When you put your mind to it. And you work to it, and and it might not be sports. It might be you know being a doctor, but I know if you work as hard as you can and you put your mind to something, one hundred percent, you can do whatever you want. Hey, that's but at the end of the day, the hardest part is figuring out what you want to do. So you figure, out, so you go through your whole life trying to figure out what you like, and uh, you know when it finally clicks, then you lock in. Yeah, it's really. It, it, it's all about like the work. You gotta put the work in, though. That's that's the number one, though. Got to put the work in. That's what anything you do. Absolutely, and putting the work in. I sometimes feel like finding what you want to do. You have to stay still, you For know, sure. and let it come to you. But when For you sure. find it, now you gotta go. For sure, you, know, you gotta now go. You gotta get to it. Like when the light bulb comes on. One hundred percent. So we've been talking, man. It's been good with Brandon Bostic. Keeping it real on the on the head, other head podcast, keeping it uncommon too. I mean, you've had so many uncommon stories just developing, even getting to the league. It wasn't even your your sport. Basketball was your sport. It's for <laughs> sure. So I don't know, man. Uh it's just been a crazy ride, you know. I'm just still trying to, I'm still trying to figure out myself. I'm still transitioning to this day. Still chase an ever-going process, brother. Sure. Like we always like to end off on the last question. We always ask, what are three things that you would suggest other people to try that you've been through or that, that has helped change your own life? Uh, I would say reading, reading books. Reading books, you got to read. I don't, it might not be a book, but you got to do your research uh, on life, whatever, like your life. Your, you know, you got to keep up to date with the news. You got to know what's going on in the world. So you got to read books. Um, what else I did growing up? I read books. Uh, I found a mentor. You got to have a mentor. You got to have someone who's been there and done it. So that could uh, be there for you when you, like, you might stumble, you go through some verses. So you're reading. Uh, you got to have a mentor. I would say you got to talk to God, bro. I, I don't know why I said that last. I should have been number one. But number one should be God in your life. So I think if you work hard, you, I mean, if you put God first and you work hard, then that'll take care of a lot of things. And you got to have that mentor. You got to have yeah, someone man. to look up to. Keeping it simple, man. Gotta have God first. He's gonna put you in the right place when you talk to him. I think talking to God put, is talk to sense. God, and then you put that work that thing with it, and then uh, then you get your mentor or research or read on whatever you're trying to do. You start 100%. those three things, you're in a good spot. 
Dropping gems every day for Brandon Bostic, man. I appreciate you so much for coming on to the podcast. You had an uncommon story, and I think the world would take a lot from that as you work on your transition and the, the changing of the world that you try to get in that process of. So thank you so much, man, for coming on the podcast. For sure, bro. Let's link up, man, when you back out here. Always, brother, always, man. I'm going to catch up with you. And thank you so much for y'all listening. Check out next week. And we bring you more heat on the other hand podcast with Brandon Bostic. Keep it uncommon. We out. Yes, sir. God bless you. Thanks.